Hi everyone, um, Happy New Year from me. Um, here's to 2022. Um, remember to persevere with your goals, with your UK job search. Um, it's not easy, but it takes patience, perseverance and consistency. And I always say if something's not working, then change your approach and try something else. So anyway, I thought I would just do a really short um, CV tutorial like webinar thing for you. Um, so I get obviously um, asked a lot of questions about CVs and as most of you know, I'm a bit of a CV geek. So um, CV is something that I specialize in. Um, so all the experience that I've acquired about CVs is from my personal experience of going through job application processes and recruitment. And then also as a career consultant, but also working in recruitment, having shortlisted lots of CVs from people. So I've seen a lot of um, a lot of CVs, hundreds and hundreds of CVs, and um, I've become accustomed to knowing what works and what doesn't. So the tutorial today is focused obviously on UK CV formats, because as some of you will already know, it depends on the cultural context, the country, CVs differ according to the context that they're in. So UK CVs are different to ones in Australia, to US, to Europe. So I focus um, specifically on UK CVs. Um, so this tutorial is very brief and it's just to give you a really rough guideline um, of how I would suggest structuring your CV, what to include, what the layout should be like, what the format should be. And this is what's worked for me and for previous clients in the past who then get results with getting interviews. So this is what you really want your CV to do for you. It should get you in front of the employer or recruiter for the interview process or for the next stage of the process. Um, and then you get yourself the job in how you perform and, and present yourself there. But your CV is the very, very first step to securing a job with sponsorship if that's your end goal. So remember to start from the end and then look backwards and look at the identify the first step which is the CV and um, I don't I know there's a lot of conversations about people talking about whether CVs are going to be abolished and, and recruiters are just going to look on LinkedIn profiles to be honest I don't really think this is what's going to happen I think CVs are quite a standardized way that employers and recruiters can get a sense of your professional history and the facts, you know, your qualifications, your credentials, your training, your experience, and also how you tell your story as well comes across on your CV, which is really, really crucial, especially if you're looking to relocate and get sponsorship. How you tell your story and how you view your own career trajectory is really, really going to come through on your CV. So um, without any further ado, I'm going to share my screen. And so this is not a template. This is a guideline document that I've created. Um, sometimes CVs, um, there's exceptions to the rules, but this is like the general format for an industry-based CV. So remember for academic CVs, they're slightly different. I could do a tutorial on those as well if you wanted to, but this is the generic and um, basic guideline of a CV that I would suggest. Um, so um, CVs in the UK, um, no more than two pages. Um, ideally, Arial font or Calibri you can use um, no larger than, oh, sorry, no smaller than 11.5 and no larger than 12 for the main text um, section, te the text parts. Um, the headed sections can be slightly larger font, but yeah, you want to make sure whatever font you're using is consistent throughout the whole document and it's the same. And it's pleasing to the eye. So this one is, is like I said, you know, it's very basic and um, clearly headed sections and two pages, um, not more. So let's, let's start from the beginning. So obviously your name. So even, even with your name as an international candidate, make sure that your name that you're using is the same as it's on your LinkedIn profile, same as on your ID documents, um, and you're, you're being consistent with your name. I know that in some countries you have middle names and so on, um, or names that you prefer to be called or like nickname, but just make sure that you are being consistent and um, because when they go onto your LinkedIn and it's a different name it's it's just going to instantly cause some suspicion or you know it's going to distract them as well to the content and um, so make sure your name 
is the same on your CV and on your LinkedIn and on your email and documents and so on. So your name would be um, the main, the first thing they'd see. So bold, you know, like size, uh, font size 20. Um, and then all the only personal details that you need for a UK CV is your email and uh, ideally, you know, a professional email address. So if you're a student, then create a professional email address and use that for your job applications. Don't use your student email. Um, mobile phone number. Again, if you're in the UK, you don't need the area code um, plus four four. It's just 07. If you're in other countries, then yes, include the area code. Um, your LinkedIn URL, so you would copy and paste um, that there so they could just click on it and go onto your LinkedIn profile. And your current location, okay? So it's a good idea to put your current location. You don't want to think, oh, if I put it, I'll put them off. Um, if you're going to if you're going to deter employers because you're currently in India or Europe looking for a job in the UK, then it's not the right employer, to be honest. Um, so you'll be sifting them out right away anyway. So that's the only personal details that you really need. Um, I mean, if you are applying for jobs in marketing or graphic design or the creative industries, for example, you might want to put a link to a portfolio or website of yours with some of your work and um, where that's stored so they can see and some of your work examples, but it's not completely necessary. No photo, no date of birth, no nationality, nothing about your visa status, um, nothing about marital status either, okay? So then you would have a professional profile section or a professional summary section, it can be called. So this isn't completely compulsory um, but I would always suggest including it because it's the only place where you can really personalize your CV and provide some context about your background and your situation and um, especially if you're relocating. So just three things that you need to cover in your professional summary section which is what is your current situation so for example a student, student studying an MBA or you're an established professional working as a software engineer um, and then you need to have reflected already and know and be confident on your main professional skill set. So, uh, of course, things like problem solving, teamwork, communication skills are all highly sought after skills, but you might want to kind of find a more authentic uh, and engaging way to articulate those skills. But yeah, two or three um, of your main top skills and your strongest personal qualities. So as some of you might already know in the UK, you know, having a CV where you're balancing your soft and technical skills is really important. They're very much looking for culture fit and the right person as well as having the skills and the qualifications that they, they want you to have. Um, so that would be things like personal attributes that you have, um, are you ambitious, are you um, a leader, a natural leader, are you um, a very creative person, you approach problems creatively, so these are things to do with your innate personality, less so about skills which are technical hard skills that you can develop over time. And also what industry experience that you currently have, so even if you have some experience that's not directly relevant, like if you're a student working in a part-time job, but you're looking for a graduate role in, in something else related to your subject area, then, you know, it's still put in, you know, you've got experience in retail, hospitality and computing. So they know that you understand the importance of transferable skills as well, um, which are skills that you acquire from many different workplaces and settings and that you can transfer to any other workplace and setting. So yeah, it shows a bit of the breadth of your experience as well. And then what kind of opportunity you're looking for now and why. So your why is really important. You know, why are you looking to relocate to the UK? Why do you want to work um, in that specific type of job or industry? And um, this is where you can also tailor your professional profile section where you would say you're applying for the role as software engineer with, um, you know, with, uh, the, the company name and then why you're interested in that specific company so that would be where you would tailor the CV which is which yeah takes it that level up to more sophisticated um, CV so for example this is an example of a professional profile um, so we've got an international marketing 
master's graduate with hands-on experience of developing outstanding and unique marketing solutions. I embrace opportunities to take a creative approach to problem solving and I'm able to apply theoretical marketing principles um, into practice. Sorry, mistake there. Uh, working in dynamic and diverse workplace um, environments has developed my intercultural business skills and um, an and an awareness uh, is where you see how I edit an awareness of the importance of adapting my communication style to fit different contexts. You see these very small mistakes. You don't want to be making these, okay? And um, so this is where editing is so important because if it's written with mistakes, grammatical or spelling, it doesn't read as well. Um, I'm keen to apply my professional skills and commercial awareness to a role where I can merge my technical abilities and professional values. Okay, so we know this person, this current situation, we know a bit about their industry experience and it shows they've reflected on you know, what kind of employee they are. Um, they've got intercultural business skills and awareness of the importance of adapting communication style. So yeah, they're very um, self-attuned and self-aware and they come across as confident, not arrogant, but confident. Okay, so uh, moving on, the next section that you would have is your education section. So um, this is very basic. Again, you know, the dates, you'd have dates on the left or the right hand side, depends how you want to lay it out. Um, again, this is my advice, you don't have to follow it you know, word for word, but um, dates um, should be consistently either on the left or the right side throughout the CV. So this one, left side, so the dates that you started the qualification and the date that you finished the qualification. So just the month and the year is enough or even just the year. Um, so if you're still studying a certain qualification, you would have the start date and then you would have pending or two and then current. Um, so they know that you're still that you're still um, studying, or you could put the end date that you're due to finish. The title, title of the qualification and the institution name. I always think the title of the qualification is more important than the institution name, uh, because obviously that's your subject area. That's going to be maybe a requirement from the job advert. So you want to get that in. Modules, so the key modules, if you're doing an undergraduate degree, then you know you don't have to put in every single module from every year. You could put your final year modules in or the key modules that you feel are most relevant to the graduate jobs that you're applying for. And um, if you are a professional and you've done some further study like a master's or an MBA, then basically you would um, put the, yeah, again the key modules um, and for research title or thesis title, you can put the, you know, the title that you had. And again, this might be relevant to um, the business activity of the, the, the organization you're applying for, which is great. And um, if not, you can still include it. Um, it's quite good for them to, to get an insight into what your interest area is. Um, and then you have experience. So this is, you know, the, the kind of the key section that they go to after your professional profile section. And um, this is where you really want to be original, authentic, and um, stay away from cliches and generic phrases, and and really communicate your skills in an engaging way. So again, we have the dates, very important, job title, um, and then the organization name. So you don't need to have here a description of what the organization does. It's, you know, it's not, you want to use as much space on your CV as you can for you. Okay, so any generic information, they can go online and find out what the organization does, or it could come through with how you've worded the bullet points, but you don't need to put a description or a paragraph of, of what the organization does. And um, so ideally you want maybe four or five bullet points where you create succinct and concise statements to outline what your main duties and responsibilities were. Um, don't just describe what you did, but quantify it as much as you can. So anywhere where you can get in percentages, numbers, targets that you exceeded, that's all great because it demonstrates the impact and the contribution that you made. Um, so for example, we've got here, you know, served customers on a daily basis. Um, and then what you'd really want to change that, change that to would be something like, exceeded daily targets by 50% by adopting a focused and personalized approach with customers and prioritizing most urgent to least urgent customer issues. So, you know, you see the difference there. We know that this person exceeded um, 
their targets, they had targets to, for serving customers, which we wouldn't have known in the first bullet point. And also, you know, how they did it. So they know that they took kind of personalized approach um, and then what they did as well. So they were prioritizing. So that's a skill, you know, prioritization, organization. So they've got everything in that, in that um, bullet point and it's clear and it's concise and it's, you know, it gives a really good insight to, to what, what they did, but how they did it as well. Um, and then you'd have a skill section. So this is where you would have, you know, your technical skills. So instead of having like a skill section at the beginning of your CV, which a lot of people have, it's just listing, you know, a mixture of soft and technical skills. You want to, you want to incorporate the softer skills um, and, and also the technical ones into your bullet points where you are actually evidencing where you've shown those. Um, instead of just listing them because that doesn't add much weight at all. Okay, so if you incorporate them into the bullet points, it's a lot stronger and it's, nice, it's, it's more engaging for the reader and it's just overall more impactful. But for the technical skills section, yes, you would have IT skills or anything like programs that you can use, Python, Java, um, even online, plat online um, ed tech platforms now as well that you've had to use maybe as part of COVID and with hybrid learning and online learning. So that's going to be very, very important going forward as well, that you can, that you're confident and competent um, working online. So any systems you've used as well, previous jobs, and um, obviously Microsoft Office Suite you would put in there if you're a competent user. And then languages, languages are skills, you have to learn them and you might have sat exams for some languages as well. So like if you have an IELTS score, include that in your skill section, a driving license as well. Not everyone can drive, it's a skill you have to learn and you need to pass an exam. So include that. And any other, any other kind of technics, technical skills that, that you have. Then you would have a section for volunteering. So um, again, you know, like I said at the beginning, there are exceptions to the rules. So for example, if you have volunteering that is directly related to the jobs that you're looking for now, you could put that into your experience section. You would have like relevant experience. And as long as you made it clear it's a volunteering opportunity that you did, a volunteering role, then that's fine. But if it's relevant, then why not put it in? It shows that you've been very proactive with trying to get experience for that industry. Otherwise, you can have it in a separate section, but lay it out sit the same as you laid out your work experience section. So the dates, whatever side you want to have them on, the title, or, or if it was just a volunteer, and then name of organization, but also what you did, because as a volunteer, you have duties and responsibilities as well. And if you don't bother describing or you know outlining what you did as a volunteer or kind of undervaluing that that experience that you have and of course you can use examples from volunteering in job at and in, in job interviews as well and if you haven't put it on your cv and you start coming up with a an example in a job bag for in a job interview um about a time that you were a volunteer they'll be looking at your cv thinking well, why is this not on on their cv you know so think very carefully about what you leave out of your CV and what you include. And I would always say as international, as an international student, always include your part-time jobs on your CV. Because firstly, it shows that you've got UK work experience, you've managed to go through a recruitment process, you've been successful. And um, so, and when you have a job, you're always more appealing and attractive to other employers as well. So it's always easier to get a job when you have a job. Um, even if it's not directly related, you'll have transferable skills and it's part of your experience. So please put it in. Um, training and certifications. Yep. So now a lot of people are doing online training courses, even LinkedIn Learning, Udemy, uh, Coursera, edX, all these platforms, all these providers. It's valuable experience. Put it in if you haven't completed the certificate or the training and you're doing it. Currently, you still put that in. You put the start date in from when you started. Um, and extracurricular. So this is where you would have things like, you know, if you were a member of a club or society at university, or if you were a course representative, or if you play T20 
team sports, if you're a member of a cricket club or tennis or you play competitively, you know, you would put the dates, um, the name of the team, what, what you do. So you want to professionalize your extracurricular activities at this point as well, even if you're a, a university student. You don't want to just list your hobbies like reading, socializing, traveling. You want to professionalize them. So um, you can leave that section out if you feel that you don't have anything worth putting in and then that's okay. Sometimes it's better to, to do that than put something in and just listing some, some hobbies. Um, and then references available on request. So of course you don't put the names and the, the contact details of referees on your CV in the UK because of GDPR reasons. Um, you could potentially do it if, if the referees accepted and they've agreed that you can put their name on your CV, but really it's better to just put references available on request. And then normally before you would be offered a job interview, and um, that's where they would ask for your referees and um, to provide letters. And for sponsorship, obviously you need two to three re um, character references as well. So um, that is a kind of one-stop shop of uh, like uh, overall of um, CVs, UK CVs. So, that hopefully gives you a really good idea of the, the structure and that you can follow how to keep it simple, clear, engaging, also what to include and what not to include. Um, there's lots of other advice and uh, guidance I would offer for CVs. I could talk about them all, all day, all week, all night, um, but I won't bore, bore you too much. Um, one thing I would say is staying away from like cliches, uh, generic phrases, so things like in the professional summary section. Um, I can work well by myself and as part of a team. I'm enthusiastic, motivated, and passionate. Um, these are words that are very overused. And if you are passionate about your industry, of course, you know that that's great and you want to include that, but there's other ways that you could word it instead of having that word uh, passionate in which is very overly used and um and it's not very authentic or original so yes it's just putting that extra bit of groundwork in and um making sure that your usp your unique selling point is coming across and of course as an international candidate you need to stand out a lot more as well um, even with the abolishment of the resident labour market test, it's still very competitive for overseas applicants, so you want to stand out. So if you would like um, your CV rewritten, um, then obviously I do that as a service and there's more information in the newsletter about that. Um, in the meantime, you could try to edit your CV yourself with the advice and guidance I've offered. And there's lots of articles on prino.co.uk as well, where I've offered um, lots of advice um, about what constitutes a successful UK CV and it is a proven it is proven uh, tried and tested um, this this formula this approach it does um, it does get in results it does get interviews and um, for clients that I've worked with and for myself when I when I used to apply for jobs so I hope it works for you too and uh, thank you very much for listening and um, enjoy the newsletter this week and we look forward to sending another one next week. So stay in touch and enjoy the rest of your week.